So I guess we always try and go back to the beginning a little bit and learn a little bit about you. And, and I know you're, you're growing up and your book has a, a bunch of incredible <laughs> anecdotal stories about what it was like growing up in Texas during the Depression. So, you know, I was talking to you earlier and I said people don't know what the Depression was really like. And uh, you described it in one word. You said hungry. <laughs> so that's a real thing, huh, during the Depression? Yeah, that was a real thing. I vividly remember all the good times while eating and the hungry times when I was really hungry. I joined the Marine Corps. That's the first time I had adequate food to satisfy the hunger within me. <laughs> So, and you, you, you grew up with a single mom for the most part, so you, you, I know your dad was doing good in construction, but then the depression hit. Yeah, the depression hit, and it really hit the Harvey family. At one time, the, the Harvey family consisted of 11 people, nine girls, two boys, a father and mother. And my mother was the center of my universe. When I went into the Marine Corps and the last night that I spent in Odessa before I got to boot camp, the train stopped in my hometown of Odessa and they had the band, high school band, and a lot of people from town were there uh, to greet us. The conductor said, we're going to stop for 20 minutes because the people of Odessa want to see you off. There was three of us going to the Marine Corps at that time. When we got there, there were girls there that were throwing kisses on me <laughs> that I never dreamed of being able to even touch. <laughs> and I was about ready to quit the Marine Corps and stay there. <laughs> well, during all this, some, somebody grabbed my ear and jerked me around behind the depot, and it was my mom Jessie Lee, she, my mom was a Comanche Indian, and she was a warrior. She pulled me around in the dark of the uh, night behind the, uh, outside of the uh, crowd, so nobody could hear what she had to say. And she called me Sonny because I was so bright. <laughs> she put these this hand up in front of me like this right there. So I could see it. She said, Sonny, you listen and you listen good. Yes, ma'am. She said, number one, when this war is over, you come home to us, yes, ma'am. And don't you come home no drunkard <laughs> and you don't come home no coward. And you know what that fourth one was? <laughs> and you don't come home with no tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and I sure don't have any tattoos. <laughs> and that was when she sent me off to San Diego. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit later in this session, she came out to see me, and you'll see the reason why she came out to see me. So, uh, you actually at at one point, um, and I thought this was a real interesting thing because it seemed like you got a lot of weight on your shoulders as a young, as a youngster. And I'm going to go to the book here for a minute. I greeted my mom cheerfully. She avoided my eyes, and this is just you coming home from school. I greeted my mom cheerfully as usual. She avoided my eyes and wiped her own with her apron. I noted with concern a puffy redness about them. She got up and went to the oven and brought out a baked potato and a big bowl of pinto beans. Thanking her, I dug in. In silence, she entered that same bedroom. My thoughts centered wholly on the food. Without preamble, I heard a loud, beseechingly desperate cry come through the closed door. No, Jesse, not that. And that was your dad. With a gasp, I spewed a mouthful of food, knocked over the small table, and went through the door without benefit of the knob. In the dimly lit bedroom, I viewed a scene of heart-choking horror, a picture forever etched in my memory. My father desperately grappled for the pistol my mother tried to bring down on herself or him. 
Without wavering or hesitation, I lunged at her with all the force I could muster. I caught her with a fist to the side of her head. She sagged at the knees, dropped the pistol, and fell forward. Inert, she laid down on the floor. I was horrified by what I had done. My father staggered back and slumped, whimpering into a corner. I headed to the bathroom and came out with a bath towel, sopping wet with cold water. I applied it to her suffering face until she came around. Unsteadily, I helped her to her feet and then seated her on the side of the bed. All the while, Dad remained in the corner too, shaking to get up or offer any assistance. Too shaking to get up or offer any assistance. Sobbing, I cried, why, Mother, why, why? With a clear, steady voice, she said, your daddy does not love us anymore. He has another woman. That's a lot of, a lot of, for a young kid to deal with. Yeah, it was the saddest moment in my whole life. I'll never forget that. And uh, my mom was a great mom. She held the family together after he left us. He applied for a divorce and I went to the, the judge's chamber with my mother. And the judge called us, me and my father to, to come to him. And my mom was too weak to get up to get go, go to the judge. The judge said, Mr. Harvey, I'm granting you a divorce. The six cho- remaining children in the family will remain with their mother, and you will pay in the sum of $42 for child care a month for six children and herself. And that was the last penny my dad ever spent on us and uh, We just divorced him completely from our minds and so forth. I had nothing to do with him after that. And uh, that was the saddest moment of my whole life when that happened. And um, it was interesting, too. You mentioned later in the book that you could have gotten, because now you were like the sole supporter of the family, you could have actually gotten a deferment from going to the war. Yes, uh huh. And and your mom like didn't give it to you, or she knew that you wanted to go in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Well, for a while she held off, wouldn't sign the papers for me to go. See, I was just a sophomore in high school, and I was failing all my subjects because I was trying to hold down two jobs to help my mom and my sisters, and uh, it was it was hard times. It was really bad for us all, but my mom held the rest of us together, and and I lived through it. <laughs> and then, so your mom knew that you wanted to join the Marine Corps. Yeah, and uh, she fought me on it, and. and uh, one day my cousin came home and I went to the recruiting office with him and he signed up because he was old enough to sign. And I took the papers home to my mom and she was at the clothesline hanging up wet clothes to be dried, you know. And I put that paper in front of her. I said, this is for you to sign. I want you to sign it now because I'm going into the Marine Corps. She laid that wet towel on the, the basket, walked down there to the end of the line. I'd built her a line for drying clothes, and there was some excess wire, six-strand wire. She took that thing and twisted it into a long whip-like thing, came back to me, took my left hand, her left hand, and whacked me across her rear. <laughs> and I made a complete circle around it. And I stopped and glared at her, and I could see that she was shedding tears, the first tears that I've ever, I'd ever seen her shed, and that broke my heart. 
And uh, I uh, stood there for a while, and she turned and walked and went into the house. And then uh, I cried, I cried hard. And so about a week later, I came home from school, and she handed me a paper that she had signed for me to go into the Marine Corps. And uh, so that was the birth of my Marine Corps. How old were you? I was 17. Okay. Yeah. I was 17, and, and uh, I couldn't pass English. <laughs> and so I quit school and uh, joined the Marine Corps. But and before, where were you when where were you when Pearl Harbor happened? So that was <clears throat> what a year prior. No, uh, the, the, I was in school, but it was a Sunday day, and Jake Rhodes, my buddy, had a little coop right there, and we had dates, and we called her Big Berthers. <laughs> the the little coop was too small for all of us to sit abreast of each other. So I sit on her lap. I just weighed 118 pounds, and she probably outweighed me by five or six pounds. And uh, we heard that Pearl Harbor had been attacked, and that that was a day that I learned that I was going to be involved in a war because of that age, you know. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, 